Hello viewers, uh, I'm George from Ireland. Today's video is about uh, the rise of fascism in Italy for A-level history. Uh, we'll be looking at um, Italy from about 1921 onwards, the zenith of the fascist regime. The situation in 1928 is that um, the fascist government was firmly in the saddle. Mussolini was prime minister, but he preferred to be known by the title Il Duce, which in Italian means simply the leader. And even when writing in English about this, you probably use the Italian words il duce. Uh, he was a very skilled propagandist. He insisted that uh, cinemas show propaganda films before each drama. Remember, there was no television in Italy in those days, so going to the cinema was much more popular back then. And people would see a half-hour news show before they saw the film they really came to see. And so the coverage of the fascist government would be entirely positive. It would always be glorifying Italy, even in the not very glorious aspects of it. Um, if there were problems were even admitted to, they'd be saying how the fascist government was solving them. The lead item would be always what Il Duce did or said that week. So uh, they were the fascist government was quite talented at propaganda, fairly successful at getting its message across. Another reason that the fascists were firmly in control was they had the black shirts. The proper name of the black shirts is the National Security Volunteer Militia always known as black shirts because they wore shirts that were black and the expression black shirt has become synonymous with fascist the British fascist leader also mostly he called his people the fascist the, the black shirts sometimes uh, the uh, fascists organized a crackdown on communism uh, suspected communists were, were simply locked up often on islands off the coast and uh, this was certainly pop popular with the propertied classes and with the section of the working class there are also some reasons to be anti-communist. One of them is that uh, communists were violently anti-religious, and um, most Italians were Catholic, at least in name. Religiosity increased under um, Mussolini as he encouraged it. In education, teachers had to put the fascist uh, message across, and those who refused would be dismissed. So uh, the messages they were trying to transmit to pupils were to be narrow-mindedly patriotic, the notion that Italians were racially superior authoritarian government was better. The corporatist way of the government control of everything was uh, praiseworthy. Things like that. Italy should conquer more territory. Italian radio broadcast to other countries, particularly Arab countries in Arabic, uh, because, for example, in Egypt and Palestine uh, and Yemen, the, the British army was there. And when relations soured with, uh, with the United Kingdom, Italian radio would uh, broadcast anti-British messages, stirring up people in Arab countries to rebel against the British. Uh, Libya was the largest Italian colony. It's an Arab country, of course. When Mussolini went there, and he visited several times, he played down the exclusively Catholic nature of fascism, said that it was open to Muslims as well. Um, he had a sword of Islam made for himself, which he paraded around, saying he could be a defender of Muslims. He had some Italians settle in uh, Libya, but that wasn't a, a great success. There was an ongoing insurgency in the Libyan desert, and uh, the Italian army had difficulty containing that. There were some massacres there. Uh, I don't mean battles, I mean massacres authorised by Mussolini. They're signed orders, there's no question that he ordered that to happen. In 1929, uh, Mussolini achieved one of his major successes on the domestic front, signing the Lateran Pact because for about 70 years there had been this rupture between the Kingdom of Italy and uh, the Vatican, that's the Catholic Church, because the Papal States had been taken away from the, from the Pope's control. That was a large amount of territory in central Italy. The Pope had ruled. Anyway, the uh, Italian government paid 1.75 billion lira in compensation, and uh, they, they recognised that the Pope controlled the Vatican City, which is a tiny area of Rome and uh, would have diplomatic status. In return, Catholicism was declared to be the state religion of Italy, and salaries were paid to clergy. There was religious instruction by priests in all schools, so both sides were satisfied. It was put to a plebiscite, and over 90% of Italians voted for that. There might have been a bit of cheating by those states, but there's no doubt that it was genuinely popular. Um, the fascists embarked on some major construction projects. These were largely for the sake of vanity, they always want to be record breakers, the fastest ocean liner, SS Rex. Italo Balbo, a fascist leader, he uh, had a flying boat built which uh, 
the, uh, beat the world record for flying across the Atlantic. And uh, there were some roads and railways that were built, but often it was one single impressive project and rather than lots of little ones, which would have been more cost effective and actually improve quality of life. Some of it, some of it, uh, so much of it was about prestige. There were various policy drives, such as the battle for grain, draining some marshes around Rome so they could be arable land. Uh, now that wasn't very sensible in a way because the grain could be imported more cheaply from the United States, but Italy was preparing for war for a time when it wouldn't be able to import food easily. The battle of birth, for births encouraged people to marry young, have as many children as possible, a high tax on single people. That was only partly successful. Um, in 1929, the Great Depression hit, and it hurt Italy too. Unemployment went from 300,000 to over a million, but it seems not to have seriously diminished the popularity of the fascist regime. Uh, the economic policies were autarkic, which is to say they favoured self-sufficiency, producing things at home when possible. It wasn't always possible. There are plenty of marches and parades to emphasise the uh, might and unity of the nation. There are all sorts of organisations for children, and adults that they could uh, participate in to demonstrate they were loyal fascists, and that was good for anybody's career. Mussolini was full of these uh, grandiloquent and uh, bogus boasts, such as he had an air force that could blot out the sun, which certainly wasn't true. Italian military manufacturing produced some quality weapons, but nowhere near uh, enough of them. Um, so he was always trying to show off and underline how macho he was and the country was. Uh, and he was keen to have a relationship with the diaspora, Italian communities abroad, particularly in the, United, in the United States. Some Italians abroad liked him. He had cleaned up Italy's reputation for being chaotic or Italians being communists and anarchists. Um, the main English language historian at this period is Dennis Mack Smith, and he contends that fascism was never popular and there was always significant resistance to it. There are other historians who dispute that, who say that's an attractive myth now, but Based on objective evidence, the fascism was fairly popular, certainly until things started going wrong in the war. Um, this is not primarily about uh, foreign policy, but here's a little bit of it. So in 1935, uh, Italy invaded Abyssinia, which we now call Ethiopia. It's an African country. Italy had been defeated by Abyssinia in 1896. Mussolini wanted to expunge that shame. So Abyssinia was invaded from neighbouring Italian colonies, Eritrea and uh, Somalia. And after about nine months, the Italian military prevailed. It should have been a cakewalk, but in fact it was fairly difficult. It was a very mountainous country. But that hurt Italy's reputation abroad, damaged the relationship with France and the UK. France and the United Kingdom were not willing to sever ties with Italy because they felt they might need Italy as an ally in a possible future war against Germany. Uh, Nazism in, in Germany was to some extent a copy of fascism in uh, Italy. But... Um, Mussolini had said fascism is an Italian idea and the Germans will ruin it. But um, he very often contradicted himself, changed his mind. But as the 30s wore on, he became closer and closer to Germany. He was always playing a double game, pre preparing to possibly change sides, seeing which way the wind was blowing. But uh, he was sufficiently in influenced by Nazism in the Third Reich to introduce anti-Semitic laws in 1938. Previously, the fascists in Italy had had no beef with the Jewish community. Mussolini dumped his uh, Jewish mistress, Mar Margarita Sarfati. Incidentally, Mussolini was married. He had four children. Um, in 1936, the civil war broke out in Spain. Italian troops went there and were helping the um, anti-communist side. That was successful for them. But that meant more hardship, more people being killed abroad, more expense. Um, by 1939, the end of the Spanish Civil War, a lot of Italians were fed up of war. They just had four years of it. Abyssinia and Spain. But in 1939, um, uh, Italy invaded and annexed Albania. There wasn't very much fighting. Okay, it was an easy win for Italy. But uh, Mussolini was a megalomaniac, was constantly wanting more territory. He said uh, that uh, the Mediterranean is our lake. We're imprisoned. Gibraltar and Malta are the bars of this prison, British naval bases. And he wanted to get rid of those. So it was difficult for them to have a cordial relationship with the United Kingdom when he was speaking like that. The UK didn't provoke him too much because they are wary of the formidable Italian Navy. That's enough for the moment.